at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is uh, sending his disciples in the whole world. Remember, he has lived a perfect life, uh, and then he's been arrested, betrayed, crucified, buried, but then resurrected. And at the end of that, as Jesus is ascending into heaven, he tells his disciples, go. He tells them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And he says, go. This had to be comforting for them to know that Jesus had authority because maybe they were fearing for their lives. But he tells them, go. He says, therefore, since I have authority, you go and make disciples of all nations everywhere. You know, uh, that's comforting for us because God has put us where we are to make disciples where we are. Henderson Student Ministry partners with parents to produce students who are marvelers, mentors, and multipliers. We saw in part one of this series that marvelers are those who love God and His Word and are transformed to love people. Uh, we love in two ways. We love as mentors and we love as multipliers. Part two, we saw that a mentor is someone who uses their influence to serve others and make them feel safe and to help them to marvel at Jesus. So a mentor focuses their influence narrowly. They focus on a few. And, and today we're talking about a multiplier. A multiplier, they focus their influence on some new people. So mentors are about a few Multipliers are about new people. And you think about in Jesus' ministry, he didn't mentor everyone. He mentored his 12 disciples. And even in those 12, he had three, remember, Peter, James, and John, that he mentored even close, more closely. So a mentor invests in a few. But today we're talking about multipliers. Multipliers reach the world by serving the community, and by sharing the gospel. I went on my first mission trip when I was a senior in high school, and I had never been on a mission trip before. My, no one in my family had even gone. And so when I heard about the trip, I thought, why would I go? You know, like, what is a mission trip? I had, I had no idea. Even though I'd been a Christian for several years, the thought of serving other people had never crossed my mind. I had no idea that my life was more than just keeping a list of rules. Like for me, I thought that being a Christian was about not cussing. I thought it was about not being as bad as the rest of the world. But I'm so glad I went on that trip. I had some friends who were going and they invited me to come. And so I went on that trip. So there we are. We get to Mexico on our mission trip in our job that week was to build a soup kitchen for people who literally lived in a dump. Uh, these hills back here remind me of, of just the massive hills of just trash, which was where these people lived. And since I didn't have any carpentry skills, my job that week was to carry stuff for the people who could and to help build an outhouse. And then my, my second job was to play with kids in the streets. So I played soccer with the kids in the streets. And I spent a whole week playing with kids, telling them about Jesus in my broken Spanish. But then also watching my mentor, Danny Hartline, I told you about him in the past. I watched him literally dig a hole for a toilet. All week long, I, I watched Danny die to his desires so that he could serve people, so that he could eventually, that bathroom would be supplied for that soup kitchen, so that people who come there to hear about Jesus can have a place to do their thing. So on that trip, the big thing I realized was God wants to use me. Short, hairy, nervous to talk to people, me. And the same is true for you. God wants to use you to build his kingdom. So let's talk about three marks of a multiplier. The first mark is that they serve the community. And you may recognize that. That comes right out of our church's kind of mission and vision statement that we, we serve the community. So a multiplier serves the community. So you use your gift 
to serve those around you in need. One way you could do that is by volunteering at the Answer Center. Every Saturday they need help on Saturday mornings. Another way you could uh, serve the community is by reaching out to Woodsview Apartments, as, as we've got a ministry there that meets once um, once a month on Saturdays out there, and every now and then there's needs that they have out there. You can also just plan your own service project. You don't need me. You don't need our church to organize it. You do it yourself. That's one of the cool parts about uh, being a part of God's family is you're part of it. You, you can plan something in your neighborhood. You can plan something at your school that can serve and meet a need in, in that area. You know, God designed us in such a way that we feel most alive when we're serving others, when we're meeting their needs, when we're stopping to think about, stopping thinking about ourselves and we think about others. The second mark of a multiplier is that they share the gospel. They share God's story of what God has done. It says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Multipliers are those who remember that it's the gospel that saved them. It's God's power. It's God's story. It's God's redemption that saved them. And as a result of remembering that, they're passionate about sharing that gospel with others. This might be hard for you to receive, but here it is. Doing good things is not the gospel. Not cussing is not the gospel. Being nice, smiling is not the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God has made a way for sinful people to be made right with God through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Multipliers are those who share the gospel. So you may hear me say, hey, a multiplier shares the gospel. And, and you'll say to me, well, hold on. Like, when I do that, I try. Like, I don't even know how to say it. Or I get nervous when, when I try to share the gospel. And my response to you is, well, I get nervous too. We all do. It's not an easy thing. But our confidence is not in our ability. Our confidence is in the gospel. Remember what Paul said in Romans 1. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it, the gospel. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. It, and a, a multiplier is someone who realizes the power is not in me. The power is not in my ability. My confidence is in the gospel. A multiplier also, he they pray for opportunities to share the gospel, and they pray that God will give them boldness to share the gospel when those opportunities come. Okay, so we've said a multiplier serves the community, that they share the gospel, and the last mark is that they reach the world. It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its taste, how can it be made salty? And then in verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world. And he goes on to say, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Multipliers are marked with a compassion for the lost and broken. A multiplier embraces their vital role in God's kingdom, in God restoring all things. And a multiplier, they view themselves, they see themselves as a missionary, and they see their everyday life as a mission field. So we've talked about some marks of a multiplier. Let's look at some prayers of a multiplier. A multiplier sees prayer as a vital part of God's kingdom being built. So multiplier, they pray with other Christians that God's kingdom would expand in their school or in their neighborhood. Uh, a, a multiplier, they do prayer walks in their neighborhood or during their daily commute, and they pray for unreached people groups. There's a really cool website 
called uh, joshuaproject.net that has resources to help you learn um, the status of different unreached people groups, who, people who've never heard about the gospel through the wor world. Like right now, there are 2.9 billion people who have heard the gospel but have not responded. And there are another 2.16 billion people who have never heard the gospel and had an opportunity to respond. They have an app, joshuaproject.net. You can check out their app and get information, and you can use that as a multiplier. You can use that to, to pray that God's mission would expand. If you check out Joshua Project and you see some of those statistics, I hope that they shock you. They shock me. Um, and if you're shocked by those statistics, I pray that you won't be lazy and say, well, somebody else will do something about that. Somebody else will go. Someone else will give. Someone else will pray. I hope that God gets a hold of you and says, you pray, you give, and you go. A multiplier takes action. A multiplier goes. Whether that's you go on a mission trip with our church, whether you give financially, or whether you, you pray for mission teams around the world, you raise funds to support those mission trips, but you get involved. I'll never forget the last day of the mission trip that I took to Mexico when I was in high school. That was my first mission trip, and I remember that, that on the final day we had finished the soup kitchen and the outhouse, and I remember just being uncontrollable uh, and overwhelmed in that, that I felt that God had used me, not just to build something, but to invest in people. And I remember I had to sneak away behind the soup kitchen just to, to be alone because I was weeping. I, I couldn't control it. And I felt God talking to me in that time saying, Jacob, this is what your life is about. Your life is not about you. Your life is about serving God and serving people. And that's my prayer for each of the students in our student ministry is that God would open your eyes to see that your life is not about you. Your life is about serving God and serving people and that you would feel fully alive as you give your life away, as you die to yourself and wring yourself out so that others could know about Jesus and so that others can have that peace with God that you have found in Jesus.